Scarlet Nexus is one of the first non-first-party PlayStation 5 games to take full advantage of the system, and sets a great example for other third-party AAA developers launching their game on multiple platforms. I'm not arguing that this is a better use of the platform than first-party games such as Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Returnal, or Astrobot, but from a studio not making a game solely for the PlayStation 5, I'm pretty impressed. If you don't know, Scarlet Nexus is a new JRPG where you assume the role of either Yuito Samaragi or Kasane Randall, depending on what storyline you choose to play. Kasane and Yuito both have psychokinesis powers and are in a military-like organization called the OSF, tasked with fighting an enemy force called the Others. Each of the characters have parallel stories that overlap. To get the full picture of the story, you have to play through each of their storylines. The number one thing I am blown away by is the use of the DualSense controller. Scarlet Nexus gives Kasane and Yuito powers. With the adaptive triggers on the controller, you are able to feel those powers at work. The tension of pulling down R2 to throw someone into an enemy in front of you feels tactile and precise. The use of the adaptive triggers makes you feel the weight of the objects being thrown. Executing a finishing move with L2 is one of the most satisfying feelings I've had with this controller yet. Even on the 100th time executing a combo, I find myself smirking as my character flips around the screen, exploding the enemy into millions of red particles. Using the DualSense truly enhances the experience of playing this game. The adaptive triggers combined with the new haptic feedback is such a cool experience. Scarlet Nexus gets another point in my book for making use of the card system on the PlayStation 5. A very low percentage of games I've played on the PS5 take advantage of this new feature even less of a percentage if we're only looking at third-party games. Scarlet Nexus is broken up into 12 phases for each storyline. Each phase is the equivalent to basically a chapter or a mission of another game. These phases wildly differ in length. A quick click of the PlayStation Home button brings up the cards on the screen showing exactly the percentage you are done with that phase and an estimated time it'll take you to finish it. I found this super helpful the more I end up using it. The last thing I want to bring up is the visuals and the frame rate. On current gen consoles, Scarlet Nexus runs at a glorious 4K at 60 frames per second. Digital Foundry reports that the game is pretty consistent at 4K, but occasionally drops to 1440 for the more taxing finishing moves. This is not even noticeable while playing. The details and animations are sharp and in small details of the environment, even down to the UI and the menus. Overall, I think third-party AAA developers are not taking full advantage of the hardware. Recently, I played Watch Dogs Legion and Marvel's Avengers. Both games have releases on last-gen and current-gen consoles on both Xbox and PlayStation. While Legion uses adaptive triggers and a higher visual fidelity, and Avengers has a higher frame rate, both feel kind of wasted on the PS5. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a better experience on current-gen, but it's not creative or different enough in my opinion. In the future, we'll see how more third-party games will take full advantage of what the PlayStation 5 has to offer. Scarlet Nexus is a prime example of what third-party developers could do with the PlayStation 5 and still release it on Xbox, PC, and last-gen consoles. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. If you have any other games that you think take full advantage of this next-gen that also released on last-gen, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear all your guys' thoughts.